Hi Peter and welcome to the update on Channelizer. What we're going to be going through here is talking about the new solutions, so the suite of collaborative um, business applications, taking a quick look at the technology landscape and why um, Channelizer is really meeting the need for IT companies to partner and to reach out and form collaborative units to take new solutions to market. And really then, what are we going to do with regards to investment? What would we spend it on and how would we accelerate our role going forward? Um, in terms of the team, as you know, we are very experienced, uh, somewhat long in the tooth, with um, experience at companies like Microsoft, Oracle, Peter Norton, all of whom are channel-centric companies. Um, and we believe it's a fantastic opportunity, as I know you do, because you've been with us from the outset. So in terms of the team, um, you're very familiar with us, for, but for anyone who is uh, taking a look at this for the first time, Anne and I, we both met when we were at Microsoft and we left to form a channel consulting business back in 2011. And that's really where the idea of Channelizer was born as we decided and, and, and realized how very hard it was to find business partners and form those collaborative relationships when you're not part of Microsoft. Um, and that's really what we're trying to do, trying to help businesses in the IT industry uh, find and form those important business partnerships. Yourself and Damien have been with us from the outset. We have some important advisors and mentors, um, not which, least of which Eric in the US, who's helping us crack that market. Barry, who we used to work with at Microsoft, he's actually at Oracle and helps us with our kind of enterprise sales coaching. And we have a number of other advisors. We're very lucky with our advisors and mentoring group who help us a great deal. And then we have outsourcing uh, companies with the Garrett who does some marketing for us and Soft Elegance who are our development partners in the Ukraine and they've been fantastic. Very, very good development partners who've been with us uh, for some time. So the agenda for today is to look through, first of all, the proposition. And for that, just briefly taking a look at the opportunity. There's some 800,000 IT companies globally, um, and many of those have got uh, multiple subsidiaries. And increasingly, technology has become more and more complex, and those IT companies need to reach out and form collaborative partnerships to actually take combined solutions to market. In fact, something like 75% of global business flows through a channel and that none more prevalent than in the IT industry. And all the um, analysts are really pointing to this need to partner to be able to grow um, in this industry going forward. So more engaged partners increases the revenue. Also, you're able to work in an ecosystem of partners to take those combined solutions to market. Um, and innovation as well, very much at the forefront with our solution because social interaction is so key to the beginnings of those relationships. People are used to making those initial connections online and then may go forward to a face-to-face -face meeting. But people, are, uh, particularly millennials, are very familiar with that way of forming uh, business relationships. And really what we're trying to do is help uh, the IT industry find and recruit new partners um, in the industry. So the influencing factors around this in, in terms of the change of the way the industry is going to market, it used to be a very linear, you know, somebody built somebody something that was stacked in a distributor, sold through a reseller to the customer. It's just not like this anymore. It's very much more a kind of flat system of multiple different partner types. And there's a lot more social interaction. There's a lot more partner to partner, different mix of partners. There's business specialists, there's technical specialists, integration specialists, etc. And the way in which the customer is buying is also completely fundamentally changing as well. And we'll go through some of this as we go forward. So in terms of sort of predictions for 2018, we are so on the mark. There's been a, a new report by Jay McBain from Forrester, who is one of our top industry analysts. Um, and those eight predictions that he sees for 2018 absolutely endorse exactly what Channelizer was built for. Um, and also very important for us is there are about 100 channel technology companies or technology stack out there. We're unique in that position. We're a point solution providing communities within that. Not only does that make us a very strong market play, but it also makes us a very attractive um, acquisition proposition. So these are the eight predictions from Forrester. I'm not going to go through them right now, but really happy to talk through um, each and every one of these um, and, and give you the detail behind it. 
pretty much the first one is the most important. Private equity is pouring into this, this sector of the market, as they say, about 100 different companies, and they're really trying to have that whole horizontal stack across. And at the moment, we're the only point solution. So we are agnostic. We can work with multiple different partners, and, and we really have a march, a sort of a first to market advantage at this point in time. Really what we want to do is take advantage of that first market position. So what we've been selling so far is on the far left. So the channelizer teams, which sits on the industry network. So think LinkedIn, but for the IT industry only. Uh, so think industry terminology, think company to company and lots of other unique features. And what we've done is we've sold teams to a number of different IT companies. What we've done now is we've moved the technology along so that we can not only appeal to smaller uh, companies, but actually to mid-market distribution companies and also those that are growing fast, the far right hand side, the pure technology play, where they can have a community software solution on their own website or partner portal. And that's our real strong play for 2018. Um, in terms of our existing customers, we've done very well selling our teams, but as I say, our strong play going forward is very much to go after uh, mid-market, high-growth, born-in-the-cloud companies for that white-label solution. And some of our existing customers are absolutely prime target for that. And we've done, as I say, we've got some good names in our, target, in our customer list already, including SAP, uh, Westcon, Extreme, which is being quoted as the replacement for Cisco, Blue Jeans, Polycom, VRV, and, and many others, all of whom are already familiar with Channelizer. So it's a, it's not a great leap of faith to see how we could actually uh, provide a white label solution on their own portals. So looking at our strategy, very, very simple, clear cut, two sales strategies, direct, so selling P, uh, to, to companies directly, and secondly, indirect. So we're actually going to be forming our own channel, and there's three different routes to those channel. So let's look at direct first. Very, very uh, personal engagements, very focused, highly target engagements, most of which will be done through connecting with individuals that we already know through our own network, and also using Channelizer and people who are already on our network um, to actually then take them that next step to uh, sell them the white label product. So very, very targeted uh, approach, and for which we need to hire some, some sales resources. Um, there's a real kind of uh, glass ceiling with Anne and I trying to do this on our own. So the indirect model, there's three different types of um, uh, channel partners. First of all, complementary technologies. So those that do something else in this channel stack. So it could be partner relationship management, channel data management, uh, marketing and automation tools. And as I say, there's about 100 in this uh, technology stack. We've already started to make some inroads here and sort the wheat from the chaff, who we do want to be aligned with, who are very uh, sort of bleeding edge, and those that we don't want to. And we've already started some relationships here. Tremolo, particularly, we've already had a, a deal, um, a, a proposal through with them. We didn't win it, but you know we've already made a, a start with them. And Web Infinity, we have a follow-up meeting with them next week, and we're hoping to uh, put together a proof of concept with them. Alliance partners, the second type of consulting partners, and these are channel consulting companies. This is really what Anne and I have done for a long time, doing channel consulting. So we know a lot of these, and we've worked with a number of them collaboratively in the past. We've already signed contracts with seizing and peer-to-peer -peer partners, and we just now uh, started a relationship with B Channels, who we've been talking with for some time. So these are consulting companies go in and talk to some of the bigger vendors who need uh, channel development and all aspects thereof and we're built into that proposition and um, I can go through this in more detail but basically you can see there channelizers in the middle so it's part of the B channels proposition so they're selling consulting helping uh, vendors with their whole ch channel development and now embedded in that is channelizer as part of that Similarly with Seizing, great company, uh, really good guys. They've got a lot of experience in uh, dealing with big vendors and their target for this year is to get us into two of their clients. Those two happen to be Tech Data and Samsung. So we're absolutely on board with these guys. Um, you know, that would uh, singularly uh, catapult us um, very nicely indeed. 
So those are just two of, um, of the uh, channel consulting. Third type of indirect uh, channel is marketing agencies, those that have IT clients specifically as their clients. And so they do a lot of uh, marketing content and social marketing and so forth. So it maps very well to our solution because they can actually do the content element um, for building a social interaction with your partners. So now going through to the, the sort of the nuts of the sales plan, as I say, three main ways of actually filling that pipeline, using our existing channelizer members that fit our profile and we're already working that particular pipeline, doing uh, LinkedIn to find very, very targeted uh, prospects and we've started doing that as well, and then working with technology companies, all of that to fill a pipeline. It's a numbers game as in, as in any sales engagement um, and that's really where we're getting to in terms of the numbers. So we've been um, working this already. We know that from targets to leads, that's a pretty good um, lockdown number. We think we can improve upon that, but it just does give us a good idea of the number of targets we need to to approach in the next six months for the the six month plan and then what we don't know yet for sure is how many from those leads turn in direct into direct or channel customers so that's an estimation but we're going to be working on that over the coming uh, weeks and months to actually um, fine-tune those particular metrics and those are the uh, the breakdown that we think that we'll see the difference between our direct channel and our own uh, channel sales for that we need a whole load of marketing, obviously. We've already uh, designed and it's up and running our brand new uh, website to promote the new solutions. So Channelizer, the network, sits separately, but it will be connected to this. This is basically a, a, a sales page. It, it tells about those three solutions, about teams, about enterprise, and about the white label uh, solution. For that also, we need a, a number of different collaterals. So there'll be some new videos, some brochures, some blogs, and also the materials we need to support those, those different channel partners as well. And from there, we will take that account-based marketing to go back into our existing customers. So SAP and Westcon uh, particularly stand out as two that we really need to sort of farm those particular um, opportunities to take them along the curve from teams through to white label. Some of the other initiatives, we need to continue to build out our position as sort of industry influencers. Um, as I say, we're somewhat long in the tooth, we're fairly well networked and fairly well known, and we need to continue to blog and build out those sort of um, best practice pieces and populate the industry platform, uh, Channelizer, with that information through the university. Because people do come, they want to actually hear what we have to say. And we have a series of interviews called Chat with Channelizer, where we go and interview sort of industry luminaries and industry colleagues that we've worked with in the past and ask them searching questions about uh, channel and how they can do better. And those are very well attended. So in terms of those influences, IDC have just done a vendor uh, profile on us. Um, this is fantastic. It speaks very highly of us. It gives us some, uh, some steer as well around continuing to build some of those influencer and best practice pieces and to continue to maintain our role um, and also to maintain the quality of the data on our network. And that's something we, we work very hard to do to ensure that everyone is curated as they come on the, uh, come on the platform and they're all you know, making a valid contribution to it. So we will continue down that route. But this is a great piece for us um, being mentioned, as I say, as a vendor profile in IDC. Forrester have done a fantastic number of pieces around this channel software stack. Um, sadly, we've not been um, profiled, but that's because you have to have a, a, a very large number of customers and, and we're just not there yet. But we are very much on radar. Jay McBain is connected to both of us. We've had interviews with him. And he is like, just let me know as soon as you've got customers. He's a big advocate and will interview, um, introduce us to anyone in this uh, sort of software stack because he knows all of them. So, And he keeps writing things about the growth of communities. So he is absolutely on side and completely gets what it is that we're doing. That's his software stack. And as I say, we are working our way through that because... Frankly, one of these are our, our exit. Um, you know, we start working with them in partnership. They embed our proposition and, and then they find us a, a very good value add uh, and so forth. So from our perspective, uh, you know, these relationships are not just good for as a channel sale, but also good for us going forward as, a, as an exit. 
Um, so our six month action plan, um, you asked us to put together a budget. We have done so. We've got detailed financial plans. I'm not going to go through it on this deck, but just suffice to say that with a SaaS or um, subscription based model, it takes a while to build the revenue. So you know, we're not profitable until month 20 um, in terms of, of the revenue coming through. We can do something about that. And we're very much aware that although there is a subscription offer, we will try and get customers to pay 12 months in advance and we can offer them discount and financing and IRR comparisons to help them do that. But we need to build it into the numbers and therefore be prepared for that fact that the revenue takes a little time to build. But what we do need to do is build a number of customers because those are the proof points that will really take us forward and put us in a very strong position. So we have a lot more detail around the numbers in the appendix and happy to go through those or Anne will be very happy to go through those with you in fine detail. This is a real summary. Um, you know that we did an initial funding round um, and, and that that has taken us through. We've taken very great care of that money and really made it last. Um, we're looking to raise um, probably not that full 500. We've done the maths, we've done the figures and we can go through that with you. We don't think we need that uh, 500,000 at this stage. Um, and so, you know, we, we can cover that off with you. As we said, in terms of a convertible loan, we don't need to have the absolute valuation on the business, but we do know absolutely what we need to do in the next 18 months we need customers we need to bring, build those channel partners we need to have that best of breed communities uh, proposition and we really truly believe that we can then exit at those kind of rates in terms of use of funds as i say detailed plan around hiring sales some of that will be outsourced as well we've got good contacts in that area and we've already got somebody engaged doing one day a week we'd like to ramp that we do really want to market those solutions, so get that website out there, build some of the content, build some of the collaterals. We need to do continue to develop the platform and also um, just write out a few of the small third party elements so we have complete ownership and, and can dictate all of it. And that'll put us in a very strong position for exit. So we just need to write out a few pieces. Um, it's a fairly small piece in the budget, but it's an important piece in the budget because it gives us complete ownership and uh, an authority over everything. And in terms of operational infrastructure, we obviously need to build that into the use of funds to support everything that we're doing. So exciting plans going forward. Um, in terms of kind of the summary, the take takeaways is, as you know, um, we're a very experienced team. I'm not sure I like being called a heavyweight or a veteran, but certainly we believe we've got the business and the industry experience. We have got the first market experience um, advantage. There is no direct competitor in that channel stack. Um, we can show a clear revenue growth with very, very clear focus in terms of what we're going to be doing over the next six to 12 months um, in terms of sales and the target. We're going to be building our own channel. This is absolutely key, puts us in a very strong position uh, and really obviously helps to the bottom line. We do believe a trade sale is, is absolutely the way to go. It could be any one of those uh, channel partners that we start working with. And the high multiple, because we've a unique blend, blend of data, a blend of a business platform, and also our own software product. So it's, it's a fairly unique mix. Uh, we were called the, uh, the own version of LinkedIn. Um, and I think that we've actually outgrown that. I think we have a fantastic uh, proposition and happy to take your comments and questions. Thanks very much. And you know us only too well. There's plenty of other slides at the back uh, with information around the financials. Thanks very much. Bye.